What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy. As always, I am joined by my co-analyst, former Survivor Australia player, Nina Twine. And today we are joined by a very amazing guest. Unfortunately, it's pretty early on here. We are joined by Nathan, the fifth castaway eliminated from Survivor Australia, Titans versus Rebels. Nathan, man, how are we doing? How are we feeling after watching that episode play back last night? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's 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 funny watching it back. It's little things that you forget, just jog your memory. And um, my time was up last night. I, I, it was yeah, an amazing experience. But I wish it lasted a little bit longer. But it's uh, it wasn't to be. Who'd you who'd you watch it with? Oh, uh, actually, I was actually at work, so I just watched it with one of my coworkers. So <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I work pretty. Late. Like nights, so I was just watching here at the studio. So, you know, I've always wanted to ask, considering your physical background, your athletic career, what was your prep like actually going into the game? Because, I mean, work out more, do puzzles. Like, what else did you do to prep? It's it's a funny one. Like, I mean, I, I've always like been training. Like, I was playing football right right up until I left to go on the island. So. Physically, like physicality wise, I was I was in pretty good shape and, and ready to go. Um, like puzzle wise, I, I, it's hard to it's hard to sort of get ready for that. Um, I think as much as you prepare for the things that are going to get thrown at you, and as as you know, Nina, like until you're actually there, living day to day in that environment, I think there's, there's nothing that compares to it or prepares you for that. So I think it's just like a lot of it's like your mindset and your mental ability to like adapt to the conditions and the, just like the air of paranoia that just sits over the, the jungle. So yeah, like oh, I, I like to think I went in pretty prepared, but looking back, I just don't think you can prepare. Enough. Yeah. Um, you've gone on before. Well, to bounce off that, before we get to like the elimination and the aspects of the game, I want to ask, like start on a lighthearted note and Say with your physical background, how was it to get out in those tough challenges against some of these other big boys in the game, like Jaden, like Ferris? How were those challenges? How did they live up to your expectations? The challenges are crazy. Like even walking out to like that first challenge, like just the the size and the scale of what they've done, and 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 what you like have to you know obviously navigate in in, in the challenges. Like some of them are crazy. So. I think, um, like, oh, oh, me, me and Jaden, like, backed ourselves against anyone. Like, we just sort of – I think you can see it in some of the challenges that anytime there's something to be done, me and Jaden sort of just put our hands up and went out and did the job. So, yeah, I think, like, we, we definitely backed ourselves in those challenges. But, you know, there's guys on the other tribe and, and girls as well, like Kirby and Rihanna um, are really underrated challenge players, I thought. Um, Alex, Ferris – um, even like play, players like Mark, like people that you just do not a dolphin, a dolphin, like <laughs> who would have thought he would be an amazing challenge player. So there's people like, you can't judge a book by its cover. When we look like when we first looked over to the mat on the other tribe, you try and size them up and, and see who, you know, you matched up against. But I just think you just never know, um, in, in the game of survivor because people really come out and surprise you. And I have to say, considering you played footy and I played alongside David and Sean, although they backed themselves a lot, they always were like, if I didn't do that right, I would have been devastated. So I have to give you props throwing those coconuts. First of all, smashing them. I barely opened even one coconut out there. Don't tell my tribe mates because they weren't paying attention. They did all the work for me. But then you actually hit them with precision. So I just wanted to give you credit on that because I know the pressure sometimes people are under when they back themselves and say, guys, I can do this. So great job on that one. I was impressed. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I was just, I think through that string of challenges um, that we won and obviously that coconut one was the one before, like I knew that my head was on the chopping block. I knew that I just needed to keep winning these challenges. So I was happy to put my hand up and and really go hard at these challenges because essentially like I was saving us from tribal council, but I was in a way trying to save my own game because I was, you know, one of the players that were getting thrown around that was to go next. So, yeah, I mean, those coconuts aren't light. They're bloody heavy. And, yeah, I think I just, like, went into, like, a, a different mode. And I just, like, I knew I was just trying to save myself. So I was just smashing them. 
I mean, one of my best friends is a Dodgers fan and you had a Dodgers jacket. So if they're looking for a new pitcher, I'm going to be like, you need to check out Survivor, man, because you had an arm on you. And, and Nathan, I have to get to that tribal council. You said that you knew your head was on the chopping block and you knew you needed to continue to win these challenges to stay in the game. And we'll get to kind of where your game went once you lost Frankie, but specifically about the tribal council that we saw last night. You had a line that said, I feel like I'm at my own funeral. And you had a moment where you kind of tapped Jaden on the shoulder. Can you walk us through exactly what was going through your brain at that time when you tapped him? And was it just you knew that the writing was on the wall? There was nothing you could do. Yeah, I think like ever since, so lost Frankie, Jess, I think sort of for those like 10 days, I knew that I was almost one of the players that was going to go next. So like I said, we just kept trying to win these challenges. Obviously, we lost the immunity challenge in the scramble before Tribal Council where we were trying to – like there was names getting thrown out. I think Caroline was one of them. Um, obviously, I was another. Um, and I went into Tribal with a little bit of hope that maybe like a miracle could happen and, and some people try and make a move away from me. But I think at that Tribal Council, um, I think the vibe of what – the, the line of questioning and the, the what people were saying, I think I knew I was almost gone. Um, and like, obviously I was really tight with Jaden and winner. And I think, and, and credit to those boys, like Jaden's a lot smarter than what he gets credit for on the show. Mm. And I, I would have, I would have hated for him to vote um, with me, like voting, you know, not against me and putting himself in a worse position with the rest of the tribe when I was going to go home anyway. So I think that was a consideration for him. It's like, well, I've got to vote for you to try and save my, like give me the best chance going forward to end these relationships because Jaden really only after that tribal council had winner and, and winner was sort of playing both sides as well. So I think it, is, I think it was the right thing to do. For my boy, like I said, I love him, but, I think uh, that's just the way it came out. I was a sitting back in the ship. And can I ask as well, considering I know Randy said we can get to Frankie here soon. After she left, you and Jaden and Winna stayed close. You guys had many days, considering you didn't go back to tribal council. Were you trying to forge relationships with other people? Or like you said, did you always just kind of have that feeling like, they're not going to let me in. They weren't letting you in. I kind of want to know since we didn't get that backstory in the edit because you guys weren't going to tribal. Were you mm. strategically speaking to anyone? Because I, I really want to know. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were definitely trying. I think we sort of left it a little bit too late. Like there was obviously like the Mark and the two V's alliance with a little bit of Eden in there. There was the Kitty, Charles, Caroline, um, Winner who was sort of floating in between. I think it was like... And obviously, looking back now, Mark had an idol. Um, the, the two Vs had no heat on them whatsoever. Charles wasn't even a, a factor in the voting. Kitty as well. So I think for them, it was like, well, we've got numbers. Why would we rock the boat bringing in Nath, Jaden? It, it was like, they're the next, like, Nate's the next one to go um, sort of thing. So we definitely tried. Um, and, and what people don't see as well is, like, we tried to search for idols so hard um oh. but it's like it credit to anyone that finds an idol without a clue as you know nina it's the biggest place ever there's so many places where an idol could be hiding so we would like in the bushes or like scratches all over us we're trying to find these idols but we just couldn't because i think that was our sort of our only hope in a way um but yeah we definitely tried but i think it was more so like well, why would they sacrifice their own game trying to make a move, like an unnecessary move? Mm -hmm. And even watching back the episode, um, when Caroline was kind of talking about the food, do you actually think you ate more than you should have? Or like she said, did you just kind of not care? Which I don't blame you either way. I kind of wish I stole <laughs> some food or took extra. <laughs> Come to find out some people were stealing food and I had no idea and I'm sitting there hungry. So I kind of want to know, did you actually realize it, not realize it? Oh, we definitely realized it. Like we, <laughs> to be fair, we weren't. We weren't um, <laughs> Well, this is the thing. Like, we didn't win a reward challenge the whole time I was there. Like, we were starving. The other tribe had, like, posties and kids' parties. and we It wasn't your fault, Nathan. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> oh, but it was like – but this is the thing. So, 
Oh, obviously us, us bigger boys, we're going to eat a little bit more than what the girls um, were going to. I don't think it was that big of an issue. I think only sort of Caroline, because she was sort of in charge of the rations and, and the cooking of the food. And, and obviously being a mother, like she was very um, you know, fair and wanted everyone to eat. And I think she yeah, got it sometimes a little bit angry with me and Winner and Jaden um, eating a little bit bigger portions, but yeah, we were just hungry, man. Like it was crazy. I was like starving. Yeah. I do not blame you. I, I'm the one person here who hasn't been out there and actually played. And I'm still sitting here saying, I don't blame you, man. I can't yeah. even imagine what they put you through. Um, I want to loop back around to the Frankie point. A lot of times I don't like to play the whole, oh, what if game? Because, you know, those questions can eat you alive sometimes. But I, I am curious because you and Frankie formed a bond super early on in the game. And if Frankie didn't go home at that first tribal council, do you think your game would have been in a much better situation moving forward? Or do you think you guys still wouldn't have had the numbers based off the other alliances that you talked about with Winna playing kind of both sides? Do you still believe you were always going to be fighting an uphill battle based on the tribe you were on? No, I reckon, I reckon if Frankie stayed in that first vote, I reckon we would have had some good numbers. I think, um, like, we were really tight with, like, Kitty. Kitty and Caroline were really open to working with us early. Um, when our, even Eden was really open to working with anyone. But I think just the way that the vibe went where it was, like, vote out the stronger players, stronger personalities, um, that was just the vibe of, of what happened. And you look in other seasons that sometimes the weaker players get voted off first and then the, the more you know, outgoing dominant players survive up until at least merge. So, yeah, I, I reckon – and honestly, I reckon Frankie would have had a massive, like, impact on the game. Like, mm. she was really smart, really, um, like, physically fit. She, like, very, like, mentally strong. I think she would have, like, gone really, really far. And and to be fair, like, it, it – like looking, if I put myself in Mark and Eden's shoes, like they, that's a that's the right call because even I see Frankie and I'm like she would have been a really good player. Um, so yeah, it's just the way it goes. Um, I think uh, I was yeah, I reckon I, we we could have gone a lot further. Maybe for on the other tribe as well because they had a lot more dominant personalities that maybe would have shielded us a little bit. We stood out like quite a lot because we had more, <laughs> we had more of like an understated tribe. Um, uh, so we definitely stood out a lot more being that more overzealous players. So yeah, who knows? Like it'll eat you alive. Like I could play the same game 20 yep. times and, and be voted out first or win. You know what I mean? It's just the way that the dynamics of the tribe go and yeah. Maybe I mean, that's... have dreams about Survivor, so... <laughs> I was going to say, that's what we love about the game so much. Like, it can, it's always ever-changing. You also brought up, uh, in the couple answers you've been giving us here, you brought up how you would go out and search for idols, like, all the time. And I wanted to bring up that treasure chest that what became a big talking point when they went to that challenge. I believe it was a reward challenge. Might have been immunity. Um but they went and they started dangling the idea to you guys. Hey, have you found the box yet? And at first, what uh, what box are you talking about? And then we we see them continue to say there's a box at your camp. So how much talk was surrounded around this mysterious box that could or could not be at your tribe? And how much did you yourself want to go out looking for that or did go out looking for that? Yeah, so before Ferris even alerted us to the box, we had no idea. No one had found it yet. Um hmm. And I think there was probably half of us that thought Ferris is just being Ferris, um, trying to, you know, stir the pot. But I think like a few of the, the like obviously Mark um, went out like searching for it hard. Um, I, I, I was in the camp of I think he's just being Ferris. So we didn't do too much. I think me and me and Jaden ended up building a gym on the beach and started like <laughs> started little off. curls. You were doing, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, I don't think like we didn't take it too seriously, but obviously Mark, like he went out and found it. Um, and yeah, like it's we we just thought he was just talking absolute, you know, crap. So <laughs> yeah. we did go out and search for a lot of idols though, but we never found that box. Uh, that is, I, I couldn't even imagine the paranoia being like, there's gotta yeah. be a box somewhere on this beach. Um, I, I gotta bring up kind of a lighthearted, funny moment that happened early on in the game. That first challenge that you had that reward challenge to kind of get the Flint, you were in charge of the fire 
And Frankie, I don't know if you saw our interview with Frankie, but she stood up to you here or stood up with you basically defended you in the fact that you were in charge of the fire. Everyone was barking at you to light the flame before you even had the fire built. So I wanted to ask about that moment and, and hear from your perspective, what was going on. Cause as soon as you lit that, I was like, it's going to be pretty hard to build the fire now. Yeah. So <laughs> me and Frankie were actually the ones that didn't want to light the fire. Um, but everyone else wanted to cause Frankie, cause I had, I had this stick and I just lit it up really quickly and then Frankie goes, no, 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 don't. So I'm like, no, nah, I won't do it. And then they wanted me to light it. So I think just the way it came out, it looked like I was a bit too eager to light the fire. But me and Frankie were the two that didn't want to light the fire. So, yeah. <laughs> she definitely defended you there. <laughs> yeah. Nina, you got another question? Um, yes. Yeah, so I always like to know what other survivor players take away from their experience, whether it's a person, a moment, you taking by yourself or with somebody else like what's something that you kind of keep in your mind when somebody brings up the game to you or your time in Samoa yeah that's that's a great one oh to be honest I haven't done too much reflect on the show um I probably now once now that I've been voted off it and watching it back for the first time I think I'll start to, to like it'll rejog my memory um yeah I mean like oh I think it's more just knowing like how you, knowing yourself and how you operate when you're literally like redlining, like, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, and being able to like function and keep up relationships. And I think you, you see like your real, once all that's stripped down, you're in the jungle, you're literally, all you're thinking about is your next meal and how you're going to sleep that night. Like that's, your life is just so condensed into these like two necessities. Um, yeah. I, and I think you like find out a lot about yourself, like just how patient you are, just how mentally strong you are, um, all these types of things. So, and you, I don't think you get that anywhere else on the planet in any other game, any other sort of situation. So made a lot of friends. Um, yeah. Learn, learn a lot about myself and how I you know, handle these situations. So, yeah, no, I, I loved it. And I think, yeah, like you said, it's such a unique experience and I don't think you get it anywhere else. For future fans who want to go out and become future players, what is the toughest thing about being out there playing the game Survivor? We've heard a lot of answers from sleep to lack of food to what you basically just said, you know, being in your own mind at times. What's the most difficult thing about playing this game? The most difficult thing? Um there's so many, man. Like, so Especially many. Oh, it's not fun. Rain. I thought it was all fun. I hated it's, the rain. The rain. When, when it rains, it rains and it just ruins everything for like three days. Um, and the, you're always sticky, always hot, always hungry, always tired. Um, I think, like, honestly, I just reckon it's just the, the biggest mental challenge. Your brain is always on. You're always thinking. There's just like an air of paranoia over the camp 24-7. You never get a, like a, a, a time to, you know, reassess or adjust. There's always things going on. You've got to be aware of everything. So I think it's just like that never being able to switch off the whole time. Like you're just mentally always on. So um, that's probably the biggest thing. Like there's no time just to chill out and do nothing. It's like you're always doing something. You're like, oh, we're talking about life, but what do they mean by that? Why exactly. did they bring up Toy Story? Are they saying they're playing with me? Like, yeah, what? and then you're like, oh, where's where's Mark going? It's like, oh, he must be out. It's like, what are you going to He's the well? He's cracking a coconut. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, they're going to the well. What are they going to the well for? Like, they're not just filling up their bottles. It's like all these things you're always thinking about everyone else is doing. So, yeah, that's probably the the biggest thing. You can never switch off. Well, thinking about like how torturous that all sounds, the question that we always like to ask to in the in the interview here is, would you go back even with all that mental challenges, even with the lack of sleep? If they called you, Nathan, to come back, would you go back out there and play again? Mate, I'd go back in a heartbeat. Like I, I loved it. I reckon the second time around, I'd be a lot better and a lot more strategic and know what I'm getting myself into. So I'd love to go back on again and hopefully I do. That's easy answer. We would love to see you back out there. Nina, before we wrap up, anything else you'd like to say? No, I'm just so glad that I got to be a part of this interview. It's really, really fun. 
Yeah, seriously, Nathan, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on and chat with us. You did great, man. And I feel like it, you just needed a few more friends on that Titans tribe and you'd still be in the game. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.